Let's go, let's go, let's go. We got plenty to talk about here with the Houston Texans. Let's talk some Texans and let's talk trade. Stefan Diggs from the Buffalo Bills headed to the Houston Texans. The compensation, not that much. Taking on the big contract of Stefan Diggs and now the Texans have an unquestioned, no doubt, no conversation, bona fide number one wide receiver. And oh, by the way, if Nico Collins replicates what he did, they'll have two big time wide receivers. And if Tank Dell does what he did as a rookie for an entire season, they'll have three big time wide receivers. And CJ Stroud has that big weapon and now has options. And you think about the off season that it has been to this point, adding Stefan Diggs, it is a huge acquisition by the Texans. We'll talk about the big positives. We'll talk about the potential negatives of Stephon Diggs getting added to this team and oh so much more. Your comments are welcome if you're watching it live and if you're watching it after the fact, the comment section down below always stays live. If you want to get in live, you certainly can. The link at the top of the chat is how you can do it. Woo! What a morning. What a way to get the middle of the week going as the Houston Texans trade for Stephon Diggs and they don't give up that much. A second round pick from 2025. Minnesota's second round pick, according to Ian Rappaport. And Stephon Diggs comes to the Houston Texans. One of the most consistent and impressive wide receivers in the National Football League, is now a member of the Houston Texans. He escapes the cold nastiness of Buffalo for the warm loveliness of Houston, Texas. And just like Daniil Hunter got rescued from up north, Stephon Diggs has been rescued from up north as well. Here's obviously the big positive, the big thing that jumps off the page. This is an offense that, with some health on the offensive line, is about to kick everybody in the teeth. They are going to be a nasty, nasty offense with Stephon Diggs, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Joe Mixon, Noah Brown as your fourth wide receiver. Figure out the fifth wide receiver. If that offensive line has a little bit of luck with their health and you get a full season of Laramie Tunsil and Titus Howard as the bookend tackles, Shaq Mason on the inside, Juice Scruggs takes care of business at one of the offensive line spots and you get something going at that other offensive line spot, who is consistently going to stop this offense? We heard all these conversations about how the Texans are going to play a tougher schedule in 2024, and they absolutely are. But how many of those teams are equipped to stop Stephon Diggs, Nico Collins, and Tank Dell from a wide receiver standpoint? Oh, by the way, Joe Mixon's the running back. Oh, by the way, Dalton Schultz is the tight end. Oh, by the way, if this offensive line's healthy, you're probably not getting to C.J. Stroud on a consistent basis. They have the potential to knock the doors off of teams when it comes to what this offense can do. That is a very exciting place to be if you're the Houston Texans. And on top of that, it's not like you're starting from scratch with a brand new offensive coordinator. They kept Bobby Slowick this offseason. Slowick stuck around. So all these guys that have been here on the offense, remember, there's only been two new additions on offense. One of them is Joe Mixon. The other one's a backup offensive lineman. Everybody else has been familiar with the team in some way, shape, or form. Now you got to do is get Stephon Diggs up to snuff, and you're ready to rock from the word go. There's no learning period. There's no adjustment period. Stephon Diggs fits in seamlessly after he learns this offense, and you hit the ground running from an offensive perspective. That is super exciting for where this Texans team is. And oh, by the way, he's expensive. You don't have to worry about how expensive he is because you've got the rookie quarterback contract right now with C.J. Stroud. You adjusted all the cap space. We talked on the channel here last week. What's the cap space for? Is it for Nico Collins? Is it for a big trade? Now, again, I said last week, I didn't love the idea of trading for a big-time wide receiver. I didn't like the commitment from a investment outside of the money standpoint. 
But Stephon Diggs didn't cost that much. He cost an extra second round pick. Okay, you still have your own second round pick in next year's draft. And yes, I understand you acquired that pick because you moved back this year. They clearly feel comfortable with what's going to be there at 42, what's going to be in that sweet spot, as D'Amico Ryans called it, in the second round. So the commitment financially, not a huge deal. The commitment from a draft pick standpoint, not a huge deal. It is a huge deal that Stephon Diggs is on this offense. We'll talk about the concerns and some of the questions I have about Stephon Diggs here in a moment, but I want to hear from you. Get in that comment section. Get to the Super Chats if you want to cut to the front of the line like J.J. Stagg. Let's go. Draft is wide open now, boys. Super Bowl is coming. That's what this is. J.J., I appreciate the Super Chat, man. Thank you so much. If you want to cut the line on the comments, get to the Super Chats. This is a move that a team that expects to compete for a Super Bowl makes. This is Super Bowl contending Houston Texans. That's what this is. We said it after the Daniil Hunter edition. This is a team that is ready to and wants to compete for a Super Bowl. And then they went and added one of the most consistent and impressive wide receivers in all of football. Again, one of the most consistent. Let's pull it up. Let's pull it up here. Stephon Diggs. In the past four seasons with Buffalo, four-time Pro Bowler, All-Pro in his first year in Buffalo when he led the league in yards and receptions, All-Pro second team last year, excuse me, in 2022, and then this past year, 107 catches, almost 12 or over 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns in the midst of the Buffalo offense kind of falling apart. And think about what Stephon Diggs has dealt with in Buffalo. Think about the types of conversations we've had around the Buffalo Bills. Hey, they can't run the ball consistently. Hey, they got to get guys to go around Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs is playing with the best group of wide receivers that he has played with in his time in the NFL in Nico Collins if he replicates last year's season and Tank Dell if he's healthy for a year. Like, that is a great group of guys to play with if you're Stephon Diggs. And oh, by the way, Diggs makes Nico and Tank better. It's a symbiotic relationship where they all make each other better. Remember the conversations about Buffalo the past few seasons where they didn't have enough. Diggs was their only guy. He was doing all of that. He was doing uh, 127 catches and 1535. He was doing 103 and 1225 and 10 touches. He was doing 108 and almost 1511 touches. He was doing all of that when he was the only guy that you could realistically throw the ball to on offense. Now you got to worry about Tank Dell and Nico Collins and Dalton Schultz and dumping the ball off to Joe Mixon out of the backfield. And, oh, by the way, you got to worry about Stephon Diggs. He's got to be over the moon with this move. And, again, we will talk about some of the question marks you have about Stephon Diggs here in just a minute. Anthony Medina, Diggs, Collins, and Dell pray for defenses. I mean, add in Schultz, add in Joe Mixon. I mean, pray for defenses indeed. Uh, Bobby Slowick, did he buy a new pillow that he wants to work out? Did he buy like a a, a new bedspread, a a new mattress? Because he can sleep a lot easier. No more late nights trying to come up with everything. Regular work days put together what the Texans need on offense now. Bobby Slowick can rest easy knowing that he's got that type of weapon in this offense. And uh, as Anthony puts the uh, the um, opposing defenses, who not going to rest well, not going to rest well. Deology, I hope I said that right. Do we trade up and get a good defensive tackle or just best player available? I mean, the, the options are limitless when it comes from to the draft. I appreciate the super chat. Anthony, I appreciate the super chat. Uh, Deology, I think I'm saying that right. Um. It lets you do whatever you want with that spot. You want to go wide receiver because you're worried about signing Nico Collins long-term? You can go wide receiver. You want to go with one of these nasty defensive linemen? Go with a defensive lineman. You want to package some of those picks and go get a cornerback that falls, or you want to wait for a cornerback to come to you? You can do anything and everything that you want. I felt as of yesterday, as of yesterday, I felt like they had to spend 42 on a wide receiver. That's not the case anymore. Do I love some of these wideouts? Absolutely. Do I really like what they could do with this wide receiver room if they had one of these guys? For sure. But you don't have to do that. Now, yesterday, I felt like 42 should have been a wide receiver. Now, as Deedology says, BPA, best player available if you want it. 
Zach Owen weighing in with the super chat. Appreciate you, Zach. Drooling over this one, Cody. Super Bowl contenders, and now we get the 713 connection. <laughs> yes, people were so upset about Tank Dell changing his number from 13 to 3 and not having the 713 connection. But Stefan Diggs, uh, he well, he's number 14. Unless they change the number. Is that official? I mean, is he officially going to change the number? He was number 14 in Buffalo. So close. I mean, 713, shoot, change it to 13. Who cares? Get the get a 13 at wide receiver so C, CJ Stroud can make it 713. Zach, I appreciate you for the super chat. Thank you so much. All right. Try to comb through the comments here. Still have concerns about this move. There's still things about this move um, that aren't amazing, okay, that aren't amazing, but we will talk about all of it, and we'll get to some of your comments here as well. I want to share this tab, Spot Rack, the trade. Texans get Stephon Diggs, a 2024 sixth-round pick, a 2025 fifth-round pick. The Bills acquire a 2025 second-round pick. Ian Rappaport is reporting that that is Minnesota's 2025 second-round pick. Diggs brings a four-year, $75 million contract to Houston, $18.5 million guaranteed in 2024, leaving behind $31 million of dead cap to Buffalo. Woo! Woo! Having to trade a guy because uh, he's no good anymore and don't like the situation and you have the you don't have the money for it? I mean, not great. Don't love it if you're Buffalo. Love it for the Houston Texans, though. Sauce Boy, 713 with the Super Chat. So now Robert Woods is odd man out. Yeah, I would think that, look, Robert Woods, um, Xavier Hutchinson, John Mechie, anybody else that's not Tank Dell and Nico Collins, you're on notice here for your roster spot because people are going to be clawing at that fifth wide receiver spot. Like I feel like we know for sure, we know for sure what four spots are. We know it's going to be Stephon Diggs, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, and I got a hunch Noah Brown sticking around as well. So those are four of your wide receiver spots unless Noah Brown shows up and it's it, it doesn't look good. But those are four of your wide receiver spots. So that fifth spot, as Sauce Boy 713 says here, like, is it Robert Woods? Is it John Mechie? Is it Xavier Hutchinson? Is it a rookie? If there's a if they draft a rookie, then that fifth wide receiver spot gets really interesting because the rookie's going to be make the team. Um, so what do you do with that spot? It's a uh, it's a good problem to have. Uh, last year, this time, last year, this time, the Texans didn't have a number one wide receiver. And I was questioning if they were going to be able to support a rookie quarterback. Now, this time this year, they just traded for Stephon Diggs. Nico Collins played like a one at times last year. Tank Dell's fantastic. And now they might have too many wide receivers come cut down time in August. A good problem to have. Good problem to have. Again, your comments as I can get to them. If you're just tuning in, the Houston Texans traded for Stefan Diggs. And as Ian Rappaport notes here, it is a 2025 second round pick going to Buffalo from Minnesota. So the Minnesota Vikings trade that got the Texans out of the first round, out of 23, over to 42, and added Minnesota's second round pick next year. That pick's already gone. That's going to Buffalo for Stefan Diggs. The Bills are giving Stefan Diggs a fifth rounder in 2025 and a sixth this year, according to Ian Rappaport. So those are your terms of the trade. So Justin asked a good question. It's something that we need to talk about here with the trade for Stefan Diggs. And thank you for the super chat, Justin. Super chat, you cut the line to the comment section, okay? Cut the line to the comment section. Does this mean we aren't extending Nico Collins? No. Yes and no. It means they're not extending Nico Collins right now, I wouldn't think. Um, but it doesn't mean that they can't extend Nico Collins. Again, one of the greatest financial benefits in all of professional sports is having the quarterback playing well on his rookie contract. Because when C.J. Stroud signs his new deal and gets his new money, it doesn't really kick in until the fifth or sixth year in the NFL. He's going into year two. That means you have year two, year three, year four – before C.J. Stroud's contract drastically affects the way you operate. So with Stephon Diggs, and again, we're talking about um, 
you know, years two, three, and four, CJ Stroud. So 24, 25, and 26. Well, Stefan Diggs is signed and the contract can be manipulated or he can be moved on from right around when CJ Stroud's contract gets expensive. Nico Collins, he's under contract for this year. If you wanted to sign him up for a short term contract that ends roughly the same time that Nico or that Stefan Diggs does, you certainly have that ability because financially you don't have this giant commitment to the quarterback just yet. Now, obviously, if you're Nico Collins and you think to yourself, hey, like all of a sudden the, the, the money's not really there because they added some digs and he's got a bigger contract, he's got a big commitment, and maybe you want to play out this year and then hit free agency free and clear, or you know, the Texans franchise tag you and get traded. I certainly would understand that line of thinking from Nico Collins. I gotta imagine today Nico Collins is thinking, my job just got a whole lot easier. It's gonna be a whole lot more fun than it already was to play wide receiver and it's going to be possible for me to put up big time stats in this offense again, because this offense is going to be even better. As far as the Texans look at this, Hey, what do you spend money on? How do you spend that money? They've got the big time pass rusher in Daniel Hunter for the next two years with the big financial commitment at his conclusion of his contract. Will Anderson should be really, really good as a football player. So maybe you don't have to keep Daniel Hunter or maybe he's not as expensive at the conclusion of those two years because he'll be into his 30s at that point. Where do you spend the money? Okay, like the offensive line's taken care of for the most part. You've got guys that can play out their rookie contract. Like, Can you extend Nico? Yes. Does the timing now change drastically to extending Nico Collins? Yes, it certainly does. It certainly does. All right. Let's get to some of the comments here. Best I can. A lot of comments. You want to jump to the front. That's what the Super Chat is for. Derek Uzzle. Big D. Good to see you. The Bills are taking the signage bonus cap hit, which means Texans get digs for your contract for only base and incentives. Yes. So the actual details of the contract, like the fine-tuning of it, probably still getting worked out, trying to figure that out. Trying to see if Spot Rack will update that here pretty soon. But this is not some massive giant financial commitment from the Texans. Like, yes, they take on some big, they take on a big portion of what Diggs is going to get paid, but it's not like they just pick up the contract and drop it onto their salary cap. Okay. That's not what happens here. So according to Spot Rack, let's pull it up here. Let's pull it up here from a financials standpoint. So this looks to be updated with the results because, look, we have the uh, <clears throat> the um, Texans logo here. So the Bills took a big hit salary cap-wise, $30-plus million. The Texans will owe Diggs, you know, 19, 18, 19, 18. So that's the cap hit for Stephon Diggs on some of this. And you can obviously rework this. You can obviously change this around with Stephon Diggs. You can, you know, I don't want to say extend him, but you can put some fake years on the back of the contract, spread out the money, and lower that cap hit each and every year. The Texans may have more money if they change the way that Stephon Diggs' contract is set up. He's scheduled to play through the age 34 season. Do I think I'm going to see that? No, I don't know. that. I don't think I'm going to see Stephon Diggs do that. But Diggs, let's just call it $20 million a year. Diggs at $20 million a year with the chance to restructure that, change that, move that money around. That's a really, really intriguing situation to be in financially. So, okay, Stefan Diggs set to make 19, 18, 19, 18. Okay, let's just call it 20 million. Stefan Diggs set to make 20 million right now. Adjust the contract, get him some guaranteed money put into that sucker. Okay, lower the cap hit, sign Nico Collins. There, there it is for Nico Collins fans. There it is for Nico Collins fans and fans of having these three wide receivers together for more than just one or two seasons. You're guaranteed one season. Nico's a free agent, set to be a free agent at the end of the year. You add a franchise tag year to Nico Collins, and you're guaranteed two seasons with these wide receivers. You extend Nico, you're getting at least two, three, maybe four seasons with these guys. And that is pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. All right, let's see here. Uh, Mr. 
Sian Judah just subscribed. I'm from Michigan. A Lions fan just moved to HTX three years ago. I root for y'all. We're not rooting for the Lions. Y'all making some boss moves. One game away from the AFC Championship game. Yeah, the AFC Championship game, that's the expectation. That's the new standard here. Go where the Texans have never gone before. That's the type of moves that the Texans are making. They plan to go where this organization has never gone before, which is the AFC Championship game, and then after that, the Super Bowl. That's the type of moves and type of offseason they're having. Go where this organization has never gone before. And uh, Sion, good luck to your Lions. You'll see the Lions and the Texans play each other this year, and I appreciate you subscribing to the channel. Okay, trying to get as many of these comments as I can reading through. John Ryan, this is insane. I've never seen the Texans do anything like this. So damn exciting. It, this is a very, very fun offseason for the Houston Texans. In the life of Colby, Nick cooked, to this, cooked on this deal. Five-star meal. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. What a move. And as Kenneth puts, it only cost the team a second-round pick. Now, look. It cost the team a little bit more than the second-round pick. I know the actual trade was the second-round pick. It cost them moving out of the first round of this year's draft. But by moving out of the first round of this year's draft, they still have two picks in the second round in this year's draft. They've got two picks in the fourth round. They've got a third-round pick. And then they still have a full complement of draft picks next year. So they still have their first-round pick, their second-round pick, so on and so forth. So that they still have the ability to move around in this draft if they want to move around, but they also have the ability to still add some players with second round picks. If you want to add guys that maybe need to work into their spot on this team and they still have their picks for next year. Like it is, it's so funny. This is, I thought about this as I was, I was just trying to get everything ready here for the show. It's so funny that the Houston Texans have traded for Stephon Diggs because the same offseason that DeAndre Hopkins got traded was the year that Stephon Diggs got traded. DeAndre Hopkins got traded for a second-round pick and David Johnson, okay? He got traded for a second-round pick and David Johnson. And then weeks later, the Minnesota Vikings traded um, Stephon Diggs for a first round pick. And most of us sat there and banged our heads against the wall and said, what the hell were the Texans doing? Why did Bill O'Brien do that? Hopkins is better than Stefan Diggs. And now all these years later for a second round pick, Stefan Diggs is now on the Texans. It's, it's just coincidence that, Hey, those guys moved the same off season. Diggs went for way more despite at the time, not being the same type of wide receiver that Hopkins was. And then all those years later, a second round pick is used to acquire Stefan Dix. I mean, it just that's that's funny. That's that's funny. And that's that's one of those things that all these years later, like if you told me back in you know 2020, when when DeAndre Hopkins got traded, that eventually Stefan Diggs, who got traded for a first weeks after Hopkins got traded for a second, okay. Yeah, traded for a first would then be a Texan many years later. I'd have laughed at you. I'd have been like, well, Bill O'Brien knows what he's doing. They're not going to do that. Watson will never throw to Diggs. And you know what? Watson won't because Stroud's throwing to him. <laughs> okay. Let's see this. Hernan Casario called me last night and asked nicely. So I said, okay, we'll take that Diggs guy. <laughs> I like that. The trust I have for Nick Casario is through the roof. Casario is playing chess. He might be playing like 4D chess. Everybody else is still trying to play checkers. One of the great, greatest off seasons I've ever seen. That from Black Vegeta 9000. Um, yeah, man, it's it's been a fantastic off season. You told me if it was just Daniil Hunter and Stefan Diggs, it'd have been a great off season. But it's Daniil Hunter. It's Stefan Diggs. It's Aziz Al Shire. It's um, Danico Autry. Yeah, I got a concern about the cornerback spot, but you know what? Teams are going to have to throw because you're going to have to score points because the Texans are going to score a bunch of points now. And here's another aspect of Diggs being added. This offense fell off a cliff when it was just Nico Collins. Like, uh, like Tank Dell went down, and after the Denver game, they had some trouble scoring 
without Tank Dell on the field. And yes, there were some mitigating circumstances. C.J. Stroud obviously got hurt the very next game after Tank Dell went down, and Case Keenum played a couple of games. But even after C.J. Stroud returned, they scored 26 points against the Titans. They scored 23 points against the Colts. And yeah, they lit up the Browns, but the Browns sort of quit on that, and the defense scored. Um, so, like, the offensive production was not there when it was just Nico Collins and the rest. Like, I know Noah Brown was banged up and so on and so forth. Now you've got options. Tanks banged up for a couple of weeks like happened in Atlanta, and he missed a little time. You've still got Diggs and Collins. Collins misses his usual game. Uh, you've still got Diggs and Tank. Uh, Diggs needs some time off, which, you know, Stefan Diggs doesn't really miss time. Stefan Diggs, over the past uh, four seasons in Buffalo, has missed, let's see, one game. And I think that was because they rested starters towards the end of the year. So 16, 17, 16, 17, the past four seasons. So at most, he's missed a couple of games. Like Diggs has to miss a game. You still got Nico Collins, Tank Dell. Like this offense struggled once Dell was out. So to put a additional big time talent in there so that in case guys miss time, it's the NFL guys miss time. You still have a really fun offense, man. Really exciting times. Jonathan, they're going all in for Stroud's rookie year. You bet they are. Trap squad says I'll be in new Orleans come February planning my trip. Now Patty also feels like it's super bowl bound. I love it. I love it. Brother, we're all in. This is the most exciting I've been for a season ever. Now, here's the thing, too. They're not even all in. Sometimes when you're all in, you're, 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 you're stuck. Your assets are all pushed into the middle of the table. Nick Casario still got chips. Nick Casario, if this to use the poker analogy, he's out here bullying people with the chip stack. He's still got chips. Now, they've pushed a lot of chips into the table, okay? They've pushed a lot of chips to the table. They still got chips. They're still going to add, in as it stands right now, three guys on day two of the 2024 NFL draft, three guys. They're still going to add three guys that are going to help them in 2024 and beyond because they traded the 2025 Minnesota Vikings pick. They still have the 2024 picks. <laughs> My old... Uh, Colleague and my friend Andrew Carlson, it's our turn to lose to the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game, baby. Not when it's in Houston, Andrew. Not when they got to bring Mahomes down here. Stephon Diggs going to do with the Texans something that he couldn't do with the Bills, which is take care of Patty Mahomes and the Chiefs, baby. All right? Andrew's been sitting shotgun with Rasheed Rice too much. Get out of here. Get. Get. Can you break down the contract expectations or did I miss it? So Spot Rack says that Diggs is owed $20 million roughly every year. It's 19, 18, 19, 18 with a couple of half millions in there. So we'll call it 20. Call it 19 and a half, 20. So about $20 million as the cap hit the next few seasons for Stephon Diggs. That can get reworked with a contract extension. Okay. And I say extension, extension. Basically, what they would do is you could put some fake years on the back end of the contract, throw him some guaranteed money, lower the cap number, and still have a lot of fun. Still have a lot of fun with what you're doing with the money. Lane, I appreciate the super chat, man. Thank you so much. If you have a comment, uh, throw it in there. I'll try to get to it. I hope I didn't miss it if you have a comment. But comments uh, go to the front of the line when they've got a super chat attached to them. Appreciate the super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, where are all the Nick haters now? Yeah, he went from, man, they robbed him to the executive of the year to day one of free agency, please fire Nick Casario, to day two of free agency, Nick Casario is a genius, to trading the first round pick, Nick's an idiot, to now getting Stefan Diggs. Oh my goodness, what is Nick Casario doing? Yeah, it, what, for the Nick Casario perception, it's been a very fun and weird and unique offseason <laughs> for the perception of Nick Casario. Um, so now let's talk about the potential negative of Stefan Diggs. As Kurt brought it up, I see uh, some other folks talking about that. Lil Tiptoe has talked about it. Lil Tiptoe's concerned about it, an emotional player. Um, so 
Here's what I would say about the conversations about Stephon Diggs. And one of the reasons I was skeptical of the Stephon Diggs chase and acquisition. First, I thought it was going to cost much more. I, I didn't believe it was going to cost just a second round pick next year. Now, again, remember about conversations this time of year. Draft picks in the future are considered to be worth one round later than what they actually are. So in a conversation for a trade, it's worth a third round pick. So the conversation around Stefan Diggs and his unhappiness in Buffalo, it is startling that a player on a team as successful as the Buffalo Bills seems to have been as unhappy as he's been for a good portion of his time in Buffalo. Part of that is getting the football. Part of that is he seems to not like Josh Allen. Part of that is he seems to not like his head coach. That is a concern. That doesn't just magically go away. Also a player with no guaranteed money on his contract. That's not always a happy situation for a guy. That's where Diggs is right now with the Texans. He'd end up with a bunch of guaranteed money there. Okay, he's set to make the money, big money. But maybe he wants a little bit more, a little sweetener, a little pot sweetener. But here's what I would say about Diggs' situation. One, it's one thing when you're throwing the ball to Gabe Davis and not Stephon Diggs. It's one thing when you're throwing the ball to James Cook and not Stephon Diggs. It's another thing when you're throwing the ball to Nico Collins, who had a fantastic year this year, and not Stephon Diggs. Another thing when you're throwing the ball to Tank Dell. Like the respect level that he has for his teammates, I would assume, is much higher because this is the best wide receiver room that he's going to have been a part of since he got to Buffalo. So you think about the Texans and what they have with Stephon Diggs, it's easier to respect those teammates because that's a, it's like, you're going to throw Gabe Davis the ball and not me. And maybe there's a little bit of that with Nico Collins and Tank Dell. Like you're going to throw those guys the ball and not me, but those guys can pay off when the ball gets thrown to them. Gabe Davis, yes, he had the one fantastic game in the playoffs, but the consistency was not there for Gabe Davis. So it's easier to throw to the teammates and not Stephon Diggs if Diggs respects the teammates a little bit more, which I hope he would. As far as the head coach and getting along with the with the wide receiver, it feels like there have been some shaky moments for Sean McDermott and the Bills uh, as a head coach. And you think back to the big uh, write-up that Tyler Dunn had over at Go Long this past year where there were some shaky moments with McDermott's leadership, and it sort of galvanized everything once the article came out and the Bills went on that big run and found themselves in the playoff conversation and near the top of the playoff picture here in the AFC. But it doesn't seem like Sean McDermott has always been the strongest head coach and maybe had some issues identifying with players. That's not D'Amico Ryans. You hear time after time after time again, players love that D'Amico Ryans played. And yes, it's second-year head coach D'Amico Ryans. It feels like he commands enough respect and doesn't look down or treat the players like lesser thans, despite him being the head coach. So I do feel like D'Amico Ryans and Stephon Diggs will have a good relationship. And look, if you can't get along with C.J. Stroud, that's not a C.J. Stroud problem. That's a you problem, Stephon Diggs. I have a hunch C.J. Stroud's already been on the horn talking to Stephon Diggs, getting this thing ready, getting him excited. Hey, let's throw in the offseason. Let's get ready. Let's do something big. C.J. Stroud is an infectious personality. He is the type of guy that with his play style and his personality, you really want to play for him. Now, again, Josh Allen's really, really good. Josh Allen's boring. Josh Allen does not have that infectious personality that C.J. Stroud has. So is it going to be easier to play with C.J. Stroud than Josh Allen? Yeah. It's going to be easier. It's going to be easier. Super Chats, go to the front of the line. Appreciate the Super Chats. Does this mean interior defensive line is going to be the Texans' draft focus now? They can do whatever they want. They want to do Braden Fisk from Florida State, the defensive tackle. They can do that. They want to go to Vondre Sweat from Texas. They can do that. Johnny Newton from Illinois slips a little bit. They want to do that. They can do that. They want to go with a cornerback. They see somebody at 36 that they want to trade up six spots to go get, they can do that. They are no longer beholden to a position. 
I felt yesterday they needed greatly to add a wide receiver at 42 overall. Now, with the addition of Stephon Diggs, I don't believe so. Donovan V, I appreciate the super chat. Thank you so much. Lane McCall with the super chat. Where do you think this ranks the Texans wide receiver room in the NFL? Okay. It's ooh, it's up there. It's way up there. Let me pull up uh let me pull up my friends over at R Lads. So if you don't know about R Lads, it is a um it's a website that does uh death charts and they they go through and you can sort depth charts by position across the NFL. <clears throat> My good friend Dan Shanka runs this website. It's a great resource for looking at the Texans depth chart. Doesn't always have the right player in the right spot, but just seeing the overall picture. But you could sort from um you can sort uh by position. So it's better than the Bills wide receiver room. I'm gonna go with I'm going to go with the Texans room is slightly less than the Dolphins cuz I like Waddle and Tyree Kill a lot. There's not a third guy that I feel great about there, so I'll go I'll go Texans maybe over the Dolphins. It, I don't even know who the wide receivers are here, so it's better than the Patriots. Um it's uh it's better than the Jets. It's better than the Ravens. It's on par with the Bengals. I mean, Jamar Chase is a freak. I don't think T. Higgins is is nearly as good. Um, but it's it's I'll go on par, maybe slightly better. Better than the Browns, better than the Steelers. Hey, there's that wide receiver room. Boom, boom, boom. Look at that. It's better than that room. 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 It's way better than that room. It's better than that room. I mean, is it is it? I mean, we're going through it here. Is it the best wide receiver room in football? What about I, I mean, this is this is this is pretty good. It's a pretty good room. AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, uh, Devontae Parker is the third guy. That's a pretty good room. Uh, I like the Texans more. Their one, two, three is better. This uh, this is a decent room, but again, the one, two, three is better. This is a decent room, but the three is better. The two is potentially better as well. It's better than this room. I mean, is it the best room? It's up there. It's up there. There's a conversation to be had, Lane. Conversation to be had, certainly. Appreciate the super chat, Lane. Thank you so much. Hey, the super chats come to the front of the line, guys. I'll get to the comments as I can. Trap squad. How do you stop this offense and face this defense? New Orleans, I'm on the way. See you in February. And then he's got the look at the man. Is that a bicep or is that just I've pushed the fat the right way? Uh, and then the H towns and then the trophies. Yeah. Trap squad, man. Like this is a super bowl contender move. This is a super bowl contender move. Good wide receiver room. Go make it great. Um, had a solid defense last year. Go out there and try to improve. This team had the most sacks for a Houston Texans team in franchise history. And then they swapped out three of the four starters on the defensive line. And we feel like they have a chance to be even better. Like, think about that. They had the most sacks in franchise history for a defensive line in 2023. And then they swapped out three of the four starters, and we have a chance to watch them beat that sack record that they set last year. And then they got the linebacker room and made it better. And then if they get some luck at safety uh, from a health standpoint, a luck at corner from a health standpoint, they could have a really impressive secondary as well. I mean, that's the defense. Then you flip it over to the offense. Stephon Diggs, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Dalton Schultz, Joe Mixon. The offensive line stays healthy. C.J. Stroud growing through another year. Second year of Bobby Slowick. Like, <clears throat> I mean, it it starts to get really exciting, man. It starts to get really exciting. And as I said a moment ago, this Texans team is planning to go where no other Texans team has gone before. That's their hope. That's their desire. That's their goal. Go where no other Texans team has gone before. Trap Squad, I appreciate the Super Chat. Thank you. Charles Honeycutt. Diggs will love playing with CJ. Josh Allen isn't accurate. CJ Stroud is very accurate, as Charles puts. 
uh, notes here. Also, thanks for the content, Cody. Hey, thank you guys. Thank you for the super chat, Charles. Thank you to the over 900 people watching live here. This is a fun job because of people like you that watch, interact, comment, like the video, send the super chats. I appreciate y'all. Y'all allow me to do this, and I love talking about the Houston Texans. I feel like I do a pretty damn good job of it, too. Charles, I appreciate the super chat, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Darwin says, biggest decision going forward is O-line depth. Yeah, I mean, think about where the Texans started the offseason and where they are now, and it's like, hey, you know, just go add some uh, some O-line depth here, you know. Uh, they've, they've figured out quite a bit. They figured out quite a bit from an offensive standpoint. We'll get some more comments here. Landry a, starts, I think he means Stutes, need a booth at the draft party live broadcast, I think for sure. I don't know what the draft party situation is going to be. I, without a first-round pick, I don't know if they're going to throw a big party. I know the uniforms come out earlier that week. That's going to be kind of the excitement ahead of the draft. Um, but when, I don't know about a draft party. Here's what I can tell you. I don't know for sure the exact details, but as far as the draft goes, night one and night two of the NFL draft, I have every design of being live on YouTube. As we talk about it today, my hope is to be live for night one and night two of the NFL draft right here on YouTube. Watching it over here on my screen with, with an earbud in here and an earbud in here to talk about these different things. You know, the, you know, hearing two things, talking with you guys, talking about the draft, watching it, hanging out, having some special guests drop by. That's the plan, to be live during round one and round two. And if you like Landry Locker, you might want to be ready to watch a little bit of Landry Locker as well. Adio 890, Cody, man, D'Amico better set him straight to play. Yeah, I'm not worried about Stephon Diggs' issues in Buffalo if the Texans indeed are as strong at the head coach spot and quarterback spot as we believe them to be. D'Amico Ryans can help uh, ease some of the concerns that Stephon Diggs has, I'm sure. And, and it's one thing to act that way under Sean McDermott, who we have these long, you know, thousand-word pieces about how – you know, many issues he's had um, coaching the Bills. And, you know, D'Amico Ryans doesn't have that. King says, working nights just woke up. We're so excited for this upcoming season. Yeah, man. Hey, thanks for working nights and checking us out right when you get up. This is a fun one. I mean, if you're getting your day started, this is how you get your day started. I mean, what a, what a, what a, Start to the day. Start to the day. Steve says, looking forward, Cody. Patty says, awesome. We'll be with you. Pat McAfee, not happy right now. Yeah, if I'm the Colts, I'm the Titans, I'm the Jacksonville Jaguars, I'm not happy either. I'm not happy either. Noah says, yo, Cody, this is insane. Did we fleece the Bills? I mean, the Bills are in a situation where it seems like Diggs didn't really want to be there, which, you know, that's a little bit of a red flag, okay? But as um, as uh, every woman that's ever ended up dating me has said, I can fix him. Yeah, the Texans look at him. Hey, hey he didn't want to be there. I can fix him, okay? You, you put him in a new situation. Really strong head coach, former player. Players constantly talk about how big of a deal that is. Accurate quarterback really good teammates in the wide receiver room. And it becomes very easy to see how Stefan Diggs' issues in Buffalo just go away. Just go away. It becomes really easy to see how that happens. Like, I, I look, don't get me wrong. A guy that's upset during success, that's not fun. That's not a fun thing to think about. Like, the Bills have been one of the most successful teams in football since Stefan Diggs arrived in Buffalo. And he's been upset for portions of time there. Guys that are upset during success, that is something that is scary. But you know what he has done during that time? He's always gone out there and produced. He's always taken care of his business. And you have good 
reasons to believe that his issues that he had in Buffalo will not be replicated in Houston. So excited for this season. Wish football started earlier and ended later. So do you think the Texans will target O-line or secondary for the draft? They can do anything. They can do anything. Uh, I, yesterday I thought 42 had to be a wide receiver. Now, not so much. Not so much. It doesn't have to be a wide receiver anymore. If they extend Diggs, will they let Nico walk in free agency? No, they don't have to do that. Again, the Nico Collins conversation is pretty simple. If you adjust Stephon Diggs' contract to, to lower his cap hit each of the next few years, then you can sneak in a Nico Collins deal, I would think, pretty easy. Um, you know, if you're Nico Collins, do you take the deal now and figure out, hey, you know, maybe there's a little bit less production for me because I'm not the top target guy for this offense? And we're going to spread it around. Do I take a little bit lesser deal here now? Do I try to play it out and maybe get franchise tagged and traded? or play on the franchise tag next year. Like there's a lot from Nico's side. I would also tell you this, Nico Collins only made a few million dollars in his NFL career. And if the idea of making, you know, $20 million a year pops up, pretty hard to say no, pretty hard to say no, but they could, they can still extend Nico Collins just because they traded for, traded for Stefan Diggs doesn't mean that they can't uh, extend Nico Collins. Cody, for a team that infamously has lackluster off seasons, why the sudden change? What happened in that front office to get this turned around? Casario, Hannah, Cal? Well, it, it, there, there's a multitude of things here. One, Nick Casario got through all the bull crap that he had to get to for the first two years of his GM career. I mean, he shows up, the quarterback wants a trade, they can't trade him because of the sexual assault allegations. Uh, they can't trade him in the middle of the year because. Um, the, the team that wanted to trade for him didn't give the, the lawyers enough time to settle the lawsuits. Um, they finally trade him in the offseason to a team that comes out of nowhere with a godfather offer. And then you don't have a quarterback because there wasn't a quarterback to draft. Then last year, you find yourself needing a quarterback. You fall in love with a defensive end prospect because you've got the assets. You move around, you go get them, and you have a fantastic offseason. You have a really solid free agency. You follow that up with the quarterback being way better than you expected him to be, and it really just kind of – it's easy to accelerate when you've got the vehicle that can accelerate. Like The Texans couldn't accelerate those first couple of years under Nick Casario. Now, with the assets, with the quarterback, with the cap space. And again, those first two years sucked on purpose to an extent because you couldn't do anything with the quarterback spot. You're going to have to have a big um, dead cap number here or there. Now you can really accelerate. You can really put your foot on the gas. You can sign free agents like Daniel Hunter. You can trade for guys like Stefan Diggs. It's easier to accelerate now because they figured out some of the things. Let me check the bad phone here. Let me take a bat phone here. Um, I do want to throw this uh, this tweet up here. I'll get to some of the comments here in just a second. Chad Ochocinco, dog, when Tank Dell come back, it's a bleeping wrap. Texans offensively will be top three, and I'll give up McDonald's if I'm wrong, and that's on Jesus' sandals. So Chad Ochocinco says, if the Texans aren't a top three offense, that he will give up McDonald's. And that is Ocho Cinco's favorite food. If you don't know about Ocho Cinco, he eats McDonald's constantly. I think for like almost every meal. Man, what an addition. What an addition. Give me Those damn allergies. We need a number two corner. Yeah, they, 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 they got to figure out that other cornerback spot opposite Derek Stingley. And they got to get some depth at cornerback because a lot of the guys they're leaning on have injury histories. But of all the things to just, hey, you got to figure that out. You know what you don't got to figure out? Wide receiver one, wide receiver two, wide receiver three, tight end one, running back one, QB one, left tackle one, right tackle one, right guard one. Uh, let's just call Juice Ruggs the left guard, left guard one. Like this offense does not have that many things to figure out. And the defense really doesn't either. Like 
yes, you need to figure out who the defensive backfield is going to be. Like, is it going to be Jalen Petrie and Jimmy Ward at starting at safety? Um, is it going to be Okuda or Henderson at corner? But you know who the linebackers are? It's Harris and Alshire. You know who the ends are? It's Daniel Hunter and Will Anderson with Danico Autry backing them up. Yeah, you got to figure out who the starting defensive tackle is. There's options. There's options. David says, hit the like button. Hit the like button, guys. Hit the like button, gals. Hit, hit the like button. Thumbs up on the channel. Would appreciate that. Subscribe. If you're chatting, you've already subscribed because chat is for subscribers only. Yeah, I must pandolin. He also doesn't have to play in the snow. Yeah, the environment that Stefan Diggs is going to play in is much better now. Um, he had some success there in a dome in Minnesota with you know some shaky quarterback play from time to time. Uh, he had that success. You know, he's going to be 31 this year, but he had that success in Buffalo playing outside. And uh, guys, you know, typically have some success inside. I'm not worried, but I understand this concern. I'm worried Diggs will give the Texans locker room cancer. Again, I feel like the things he was upset about in Buffalo, can you can very easily assure him that that's not going to be an issue here in Houston. I think you can very easily assure him. Students, can we still afford Justin Simmons or Jonathan Allen from the Commanders? Allen, I, I don't know. They're trading him. He'd cost draft picks. I don't know if they want to do that as well. Uh, Justin Simmons, the longer it goes, the cheaper I would think uh, Simmons gets. So, um, um, can they afford him? Sure. I mean, what Simmons exactly want? I'm not, I'm not totally sure. I mean, you add him to the safety equation. That safety room gets real fun. Nico Collins had a better year than Diggs. Why don't you think he's the number one target in 2024? I mean, you're going to change who the number one is each week. Like, like this, you saw it this year with the Texans. This offense is designed to maximize what CJ Stroud sees as open and throw it to the open guys. That's what happens. Like, that's what. This offense is set up to do. It's not set up to get Diggs the ball. It's not set up to get Nico Collins the ball. It's not set up to get Tank Dell the ball. It's set up to get a guy open and have C.J. Stroud see him and throw him the ball. Some weeks that's going to be Diggs. Some weeks that's going to be Collins. Some weeks that's going to be Tank Dell. Maybe there's a Dalton Schultz week, but they've got options. You add options to it. Yes, Nico Collins had a really good year. Stephon Diggs is one of the most consistent wide receivers in all of football. He's gone over 1,000 yards for six consecutive seasons. He scored six or more touchdowns in uh, seven consecutive seasons. He scored eight or more touchdowns in four consecutive seasons. His average season over the past four years is 1343 and nine touchdowns with 111 receptions. Like, yes, Nico Collins had one year that's better than Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs has a track record of success that is among the most consistent in all of football. So I, I'm, uh, yes, Nico Collins had a good year. You um, absolutely, absolutely have multiple one options if Nico Collins replicates what he did last year and Diggs brings to the table what Diggs brings to the table. You absolutely have those options. So the conversation about the, uh, the opponents, the conversation about the opponents. I know that was a um, popular. I know that was a popular. Um, hey, like hey, the Texans' schedule is going to be tougher. The Texans have improved while the following teams have gotten worse this off season. Um, that are coming to NRG Stadium. The Ravens got worse this year. They lost a couple of players. Uh, the Texans got better. The Bills obviously got worse. The Texans got better. Dolphins got worse. Texans got better. Bears got a little bit better. Texans got better as well. Lions, you know, got a little bit better. Uh, Texans got better. Colts, uh, I'm going to say that they stayed about the same. You know, no, no big change there. Jaguars got worse. Titans got better, but they were already far behind the Texans. Traveling to the Chiefs. Chiefs got worse this year in the offseason. I mean, or stayed about the same if you want to do it that way. I don't know who knows what she rises the situation is. Who cares about the Patriots? Jets got a little bit better, uh, but we have no idea if Aaron Rodgers is going to play that game, if he's going to be healthy. If he plays, fun game. If not, the Texans house the Jets. 
Um, Packers, yeah, got a little bit better. Got a little bit better. Uh, Vikings, got worse. Going to play a rookie quarterback. And the Cowboys, I mean, got worse. Done nothing. Like the Texans got better while a bunch of their opponents stayed the same or got worse. So I'm not super worried about the schedule. Oh, Dominic says, I want to join. I can't find the link. Oh, I don't think I, I didn't, I don't think I, uh, if you want to get in, that's why nobody's been jumping in. I haven't, I didn't pin the link. Jump in, Dom. I just put it in the chat. I appreciate you with the super chat, man. That's, that's too kind, uh, Dom. That's too kind. Let me go through here and uh, pin that to the top of the chat. We can keep this going. Dom. All right, so the pinned message at the top of the chat, which I forgot to pin a second ago, is how you jump in from an audio or visual standpoint. Appreciate everybody getting down in the uh, chat. Andrew Carlson, NRG better be packed F out next season. No excuse for any of these bozos who were on the fence for whatever reason last season. Yeah, no questions about that. Dom from New Jersey wants to weigh in. What's up, man? Bro, what a day. Listen, I know there's a lot done, and I pulled over. I want to make it that clear. I pulled yeah. over today. <laughs> so <laughs> I want to make something clear. I know there's some skepticism about Diggs and, you know, his antics on and off the field, whatever, having problems. But if there's anyone who could coach this guy, it's D'Amico. If there's anyone who, like you said earlier, CJ has that infectious personality where – I don't think it's going to be an issue. And I think you saw a lot of guys wanting Houston. And, Cody, when's the last time we've been able to say that? Usually we drive guys out of town, right. you know. So I'm excited about this. Um, you'd have to be blind to not have watched that Ravens playoff game last year and realize CJ had nowhere to go with that ball. I mean, we had we didn't have Tank. Nico didn't look 100%. He had nowhere to go to. This – having digs now, I mean – this team's going to be uncoverable, bro. Go ahead. Say again. This team's going to be tough to cover. You got Diggs, oh. Nico, Tank. I mean, we all saw that Ravens game. There was nowhere to throw the ball for CJ. Well, after so after Tank went down, they did not score enough as an offense. Like, no. like obviously the Jets game, CJ was hurt. Nico got hurt in the first like play of the game. And then the Titans game, whatever. Uh, um, and the Browns game, whatever. It's Case Keenum. But even when CJ was back, they were still piecing it together. It was it was like duct tape on offense. Like, they didn't yeah. blow the Colts out. Like, the Colts defense right. solid with good wide receiver play and options and depth. They could have blown the Colts out, and we wouldn't have had to worry about, you know, Kaimi missing an extra point there at the end of the game. Um, right. Like, and then you saw, and then, and then, you know, the, the defense took care of business against the Browns. That's, you know, obviously the offense did their part, but the defense did the business against the Browns. But the Ravens game, and if you took away one thing, it just it just blew this offense up. Now you've got three things. You know, Tank stays healthy. Nico, Diggs, Mixon, I believe, is better than Singletary. I'd like to add some depth to that running back room. I agree. Um, I agree. You know, maybe some depth at tight end as well. But like Schultz, the offensive line play. Like, you see a path, like the concerns that you – from a football standpoint brought up, you see a path to those things not being replicated in 2024. Like it's easier to see how you can um, stay away from those issues that you just talked about. Absolutely. And, and like going back to your point earlier about Slowick, I mean, it was like week to week basis. I mean, he did a hell of a job. I was drawing things up. Like maybe we should put Brevin Jordan at fullback at one point. <laughs> I mean, that's where we were last year. So now to have three arguably number one receivers on your team. I mean, it just makes things so much more smooth and more fluid. I uh, still have my concerns about the offensive line, uh, concerns about Tunsil's offsides issues, concerns about Titus staying healthy. But, you know, one last thing I want to leave you with, because I can't – I always remember when CJ got drafted by us, um, you know, there was memes out because he was crying, he was emotional, that he's crying because he got drafted by Houston – Little did everybody know this would be the position that our organization will put that kid in. I mean, we couldn't have dreamed of stuff like this a couple of years ago, I mean, bro. A year ago, a year ago, and I'm one of them, there was still conversation about 
gosh, wish the Texans had won that final game and they weren't picking number two. Like, what are they going to do? Like, the, like, like, are they going to draft Anthony Richardson? Are they going to draft Will Levis? Are they going to draft a defensive lineman? Like, a year ago, it was Tyree Wilson, like the, the kid from Texas Tech. It's like, oh, they're going to draft him because they don't like Will Anderson. And it's like a year later, they had the offensive rookie of the year, the defensive rookie of the year. Tank Dell's awesome, who was also a draft pick. Um, right. Zeus Scruggs played well once he finally got healthy, uh, and he's going to grow into the situation. Right. And then they added the deal Hunter, and now they got Stephon Diggs. Like, in a year, Bro, a year it's ago, unbelievable. we didn't know that they could – like, we didn't even know if they had any good wide receivers. Now you're talking about it. They've got three guys that are just studs and on any given play and take care of business for this team. It's awesome. And – Two last things before I let you go. Cody, first off, you got a th- almost a thousand people in here, bro. You and Landry are the kings of uh Texans you. content on YouTube. Um, double edged short here in favor of the Texans because now we've depleted Buffalo as well, who I would consider as one of the contenders in the AFC. So that's huge for us. And one last question for you. I know it could be all over the place, but who's your dream guy now at at our uh forty second pick? Uh, but I'll let I you mean, go, bro. Stutes, thanks for the time, brother. I'll Tom, listen. I appreciate it. Dominic from New Jersey. Fantastic stuff. Who's the dream guy at 42? Do I get greedy and go wide receiver again? Do I get greedy and go wide out again? Probably not. Although Ricky Purcell, with his ability to help out on special teams, would be really fun. Do I go greedy and go wide receiver again? Probably not. I know. I'll go defensive tackle. I'll go Braden Fisk. Um, the defensive tackle for Florida State. Or Tavondre. I like Tavondre Sweat. He's not what D'Amico Ryans typically would have. A defensive tackle. That's okay to step out of your comfort zone. It's okay to step out of your comfort zone. Avenue.Central. It's officially Stroud boy season. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. CJ Stroud. Uh, Going to have a fun season. Fun season. Yeah, just... Uh, so uh, Darwin Lemon, who I think is a Texas fan based on his uh, his uh, thing here, uh, Sanders or Sweat. Yeah, Jatavian Sanders um, or Tavondre Sweat, certainly. Certainly. Yeah, Sanders or Sweat. Yeah, Fisk or Sweat. Yeah. Yeah. Sweat, man. Yep. He's the great wall. He's the great wall. That's funny. That's funny. Okay, that is uh, – oh, yeah. Darwin says the good vibe. I, I deemed last year the era of good vibes. The era has not stopped. The era continues. The era of good vibes continues. You know what? I'm reprinting the stickers. I'm reprinting the era of good vibes stickers. I might even rework the – you know, we work them a little bit. Era good vibes stickers are coming back. Be on the lookout for that. Be on the lookout for that. Era good vibe stickers coming back. Okay. Housekeeping items. Housekeeping items. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Okay. Thumbs up on the video. Check out Underdog Fantasy, the best place to play fantasy. You can get your season-long best ball drafts in now before the draft. You can do pick them with baseball and hockey. And, you know, I, I, I do a ton of baseball pick them's. It's easier, it, you know, it's very easy to play. If you have any questions about underdog, let me know. I'll answer them. Um, the link's in the description down below. Game responsibly. Stephon Diggs is on the Houston Texans now. It cost them a second-round pick next year. It's not going to financially cost them a whole heck of a bunch of money. They can do whatever the hell they want at 42 right now. Probably defensive tackles where I'm leaning right now, but the Texans could do whatever they wanted. And, you know, if the right players fell, they could trade up for him. Uh, check out Houston football. We'll have a ton of stuff on Houston football, breaking down Stefan Diggs, what he brings to the table. Um, ton of stuff here on the channel that we're going to talk to uh, a bunch of different people about when it comes to Stefan Diggs. Tons of stuff. And I say it again. Thank you guys, because you make this so much fun. It is so easy to do this. And it's so much fun to do this. Oh, from Germany. I don't know how to say your name, and I'm not going to try it because I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to mess it up. But thank you for checking in from Germany. I have no idea what time it is in Germany. I got to imagine it's not. Er, it's not early. I mean, it's not late. I mean, it's not what. It's not middle of the day like it is here. God, I'm an idiot. 
Uh, Neil, thank you. Um, yeah, thumbs up on the channel, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you to everybody who stopped by live after the fact. Um, thank you. Thank you. It is a, it is so much fun to do these. It is so much fun to talk about this Texans team. What a off season. If it was just Daniel Hunter, it was going to be a fun off season. If it was just Stefan Diggs, it was going to be a fun off season, but they rescued both of these men from the cold frigid North and it's heating up in Houston. In addition to so many other fantastic moves and they still got picks to make the draft is right around the corner we'll have tons of draft coverage for you tons of breakdowns so much fun stuff so much fun stuff thank you everybody for watching thank you for watching the live stream we'll have plenty more here on the youtube channel i end all the live streams if you're new if you're new you need to learn this i end all the live streams the same way it's my hope for you it's my charge for you as well i want you to eat good sleep good and be good and I can't wait. I can't wait to see what the Texans give us to talk about next. And I can't wait to talk Texans again soon with you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for watching. We'll talk Texans again soon.